Hi, my name is Katie Rourke Dowding and I'm an international certified master groomer. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to brush and comb your dog. Before we start grooming a dog, it's important to have a look at the area that you're going to be grooming the dog in or on. I want you to understand the significance of the surface that you're grooming your dog on and how that's going to impact his grooming. I'm choosing to use a portable grooming table. Uh, this is not the table that I normally groom on professionally. This is one that I take to shows with me. It can be picked up relatively cheaply. It's important to make sure that you've got it up to the right height, whatever you're going to use to prop it up if it's not quite high enough. I think waist height is a good height because I only groom small dogs. You may want it slightly lower if you've got a big dog. I'm also using a backdrop. This prevents a small dog from going to the other side of the table. That's quite important because it gives the dog some stability and it keeps the dog in a place that you want to have it in when you're grooming. You could use anything else to block the table off. If you're using your dining room table, I've been working with clients who've been using dining room chairs lying on their sides just to give this shelf-like area for a small dog to work on. Very, very important. Another thing I'd like you to think about is the surface itself. Is it too slippy for the dog to be on? A lot of dogs hate being groomed because the surface you're grooming them on is just too slippery. So a rubber car mat will do really well, a piece of carpet, just something so your dog is not going to slip or slide when it's on the table. Really important. This is Jess. Jess is a toy poodle and all the poodles and the poodle crosses have a coat that tends to mat. So we're going to teach you how to deal with that today. As you can see, she's in dire need of brushing as we speak. The coat is falling in loose wrinkles and ringlets and there is a little bit of matting going on which we're going to have to deal with. I would recommend that you get yourself a flexible slicker brush. This is one of the Simpsons flexible slickers and I love it. Really good brush. And we're going to start at the end of a pour. You don't start at the top, you're going to start at the bottom. And all you need to do is brush out a little bit at the bottom first. Just that first centimetre and a half, two centimetres. And once you've done that, you take a fairly wide tooth comb and you comb through it. If you find any knots, you need to do a little bit more brushing. Then you take your comb and you comb a little bit down, still holding the rest of that fur back if you can, and you take your brush back and you brush out that next inch or so. And you take your comb and you check it. The comb is not for ripping through tangles, the comb is just to find them. If we find a big tangle, we're going to deal with that with the brush or with the scissors. So you continue up the leg, brushing and combing and testing with the comb to find any knots. And if you find a knot, like she has got the mat in here and Hers, this one probably would brush out, but I'm going to show you the technique that we use to cut mats out if necessary. First of all, separate that knot from all the surrounding good fur. And then pinch the dog's skin so that my fingertips are proud of where her skin is. So if I cut anything, I'm going to be cutting me and not my dog. I'm then going to take a pair of thinning scissors. Thinning scissors look like this. They've got teeth on one side and blades on the other. And I'm going to cut at the bottom of the knot, in the middle of the knot, and at the top of the knot. So I'm cutting it into thirds. So one, two, three, like that. And then starting at the very top of the fur, I'm going to comb that knot out. 
and the knot will come away really easily. It's going to leave an area of fur that is thinner and finer than it was before, but it won't be the giant hole that you would create if you cut it straight out using straight scissors. That will just create a big hole. At least this will create a slightly blurred hole in the coat. A groomer would be able to find it, but the average person won't be able to notice it once the rest of the dog is combed out. Now it takes several minutes to brush out each leg and to do it properly. And for me, once I've gone over with a, a wide tooth comb, I'll go over with the thin, tiny finishing end of the comb to be sure that I've got everything combed out right down to skin. And the mistake that most owners make with a fleece coat like this is that they skim over the top of the coat with a brush like this. It looks fabulous. In fact, I can show you with her front leg. It will look absolutely fabulous. And they start at the top and they brush all the way down the leg thinking they're doing a fabulous job but they never go in with a comb and they don't check so actually we didn't get down to skin and as you can see that comb's not gliding through and it doesn't matter how thick the dog's coat is if it's properly brushed out down to skin it will simply glide through the coat like that One of the things that I'm asked frequently is how often should you brush your dog? That's a difficult one to answer. The dog has to be mat free and to do that you're going to have to brush frequently. But if you brush a dirty coat you're likely to damage hair and damaged hair leads to matting which makes a vicious cycle. So I would say that this thorough method I've taught you today of brushing out, line brushing up the legs and then across the body and then the head combing each section as you've done it should only really be done after you've bathed the dog and the dog has a squeaky clean and dry coat. During the following week the dog's going to get a little bit knotty again so you are going to have to brush out but if you've taken your dog for a wild romp through the woods and it's absolutely filthy you need to wash it first. This is Michael and Michael has a short coat. Just because he has a short coat does not mean he's not a candidate for grooming. We're going to use several different, different tools on Michael and I'm going to use a brush to massage the skin and to brush out any of the dead skin cells. And I'll be using a banded comb to show you how to get dead hair out of the dog's coat. Because just because it's a short coat doesn't mean it's not shedding. I'll also be using a decent shine and polish spray so that he comes up nice and shiny when I'm polishing his coat with a brush. So we start by using a banded comb. Let me just move you around a little, Michael. You can see that the backdrop's working well. It stops him from moving to the end of the table. And I'm just going to comb over the areas that I know he's going to be shedding in. I don't know if you can see that as a close up. Just that rubber comb takes out so much hair. I'm not really a big fan of uh, the Furminator type brushes. I know some people love them, but for me, I think they're just a bit too harsh. I would much rather be using a tool like this. So once you've gone over the dog all over, I'll just turn him around. Oh, that's a good lad, good boy. There we go. Oh, Michael, you're not mad keen on this as a process, are you? He'd much rather be chasing things than being on the grooming table. Is that nice? Do you like that? So, we've got quite a lot of hair out of him, as you can see. From just that little, yeah, it's you. That's your fur. So, the next thing I'm going to do is spray some shine and polish spray into a brush and as with all things you get what you pay for 
This brush is a leather backed body brush and I've had it for at least 20 years. It's just awesome for doing this bit, which is polishing. And now we can go over the areas that we didn't cover with the comb. So the brush right down to his feet. Now this brush has got medium bristles. It's quite soft, but it's not as soft as the little face brush I've got down there. And that's where I'll be doing his head. So your, the aim of this is to stimulate the blood circulation. As you can see, he was operated on recently. So he's got some areas which are quite bald where the vets have clipped out areas for IVs and stuff but he's back to full health now. So we can do a nice brisk polishing stroke and get rid of any dandruff, the last loose hairs, and really polish that coat up. Do the head, we're going to do the same thing, albeit slightly more gently. brush out the face. Like that. Now Michael is a raw fed dog and therefore he has got a much better coat than he would have if he was commercially fed. I fed raw now since 1991 and the difference is tangible. The hairs are much shinier and they are they repel dirt and dander a lot better than uh, a commercially fed dog. So that's all I would do for a short coated dog like Michael. This is Owen. Owen is a pug crossed with a border terrier, we suspect. Um, he's got a different coat to Michael in that it's wiry and it sheds like a demon. If he hadn't have been neutered, he might have been a prime candidate for hand stripping, which is where you pull the long fur, these long guard hairs, out of the coat. And you just do that with your fingers. If they're not attached to the skin anymore because the where the hair has grown from has actually detached from the follicle itself, then these hairs will pull through the skin because they're not actually attached to by the root anymore. And that's what hand stripping is. However, when you neuter a dog, this changes. And as you can see, there are areas where he would probably hand strip, but there are areas where he definitely won't. So this is a dog that I would think is a better candidate for clipping than stripping. His daily maintenance, is trying to keep that shedding hair under control. So we're back to the banded comb for Owen. I'm just going to move you around, Poppy. Let's do that. Let's have you sideways on. There's a good boy. I know you'd like to be a star for the camera, wouldn't you? Let's have you standing. Good boy. So again, it is a case of getting in there and combing all of that fur out. A damp coat will remove a lot more fur, but can you see how much is coming out already? And we just want to take all of that undercoat out because it's the undercoat that will cause him to get hot in the summer. So all that dead fur, if it's not dead, it won't come out. So don't panic about this. And I've got, I'm using a, a lovely, good quality comb, which has got rounded tines at the end of each tine. It's all nice and round. There's nothing sharp here, so I'm not going to hurt the dog. And again, go over all the areas that are covered with, in his case, rather a substantial layer of fat. And uh, um, whoop, is that an itchy tip? We've got an itchy spot. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Look, we've got a bit of itchy. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, they're nice. Good boy. Is that lovely? But I don't want to go harsh over these bony areas like the elbows. I'm being really careful about those areas. 
And once you've gone over and you're not getting any more undercoat out, you can then give the dog a mist over with our shine spray. I love these Flarisol bottles. They make the product go so much further. Let's see if any more is going to come out. And then I'm going to polish him with a polishing brush in the same way as I did with Michael. It's nice, vigorous. Is that nice? Is that good? Oh, nice. And again, can you see the hair coming out with just the body brush? Oh, 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 oh that's good. And as you can tell, he's still very much a puppy. He likes to chew everything. Give that. There we go. And I turn him around and do the other side. And that would be his coat done. 